I'm going to give you the title so that you'll understand before I get to the actual title, you'll understand why I'm taking you down a certain trail. And uh, so come with me today. How many of you want to learn today? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to be speaking this uh, in, in a prophetic sense. This is really a prophetic word. You need to learn how to hear prophecy and hear the spoken word because what you'll hear is your own fear, your own doubt, because we've been talking about something. I've been speaking about the effects of the carnal mind. Hello. And we've been talking about it from Romans 8, 7. You can put it on the board, please, Angela. And uh, Romans 8, 7, we've been talking about speaking from a level of the effects that the carnal mind, the natural mind, has. This is a, a true enemy of God. That's been one of the titles on Thursday night. We had a marvelous service last Thursday night. And we were talking about some deep stuff. I mean some thinking stuff. And um, this is the true enemy of God is the carnal mind, not Satan. Satan is not the enemy of God. Making him the enemy of God makes him an equal. And that's called duality. And Satan is not equal with God because God made him. Are you hearing me? And God threw him out of the realm of God. And if God could do all that, how do you know the thing made is not greater than the thing that made it? Mind of the flesh, we can say no to God. We can say we don't want God. We can say no, we don't like the things of God. We can rebel. It, it's done every day. The church is never where it should be because it wrestles every day with an unredeemed carnal mind. That's why uh, young couples that come into church end up in bed. Because they're not thinking from the mind of the spirit. They're thinking from the carnal mind. Romans tells us in, in the Message Bible, it says it, that your mind is the enemy of God. Now, if you read it, focusing on self is the opposite of focusing on God. Anyone completely absorbed in self ignores God, ends up thinking more about self than God. Amen. And uh, keep going. Come on. Uh, and a person uh, ignores who God is and what he is doing. How do you know that's true? He ignores who God is. That translation is not near as good as if you read King James, you read The Living, you read some of these others, you'll see. It says over and over and over, self, of course. You know, the Bible says in the last days in Timothy, it says that there will be people that will be lovers of self more than lovers of God. Amen. Lovers of pleasure and lovers of self. And I'm, I want you to hear self has become the God of this age. And they worship better than we do. They build their songs around it. They build their mu music around it. They put their money in it. And everything they do is based on the worship of self. Well, come with me now. Now, the born-again believer in Christ on the opposite can have the mind of the Spirit. So you can have the carnal mind or you can have the mind of the spirit. And the mind of Christ, the Bible says you can have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ, when you see the word Jesus Christ, the word there is Christ is Christos. That is the spirit. Amen. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay. And so the mind of Christ is a spirit led mind. And we can walk, it says, in the renewed, transformed mind that comes through the washing of the Word of God. If you let the Word of God wash your mind, you can begin to think different. Have you here? Now, the carnal mind doesn't think like God. And I've said in our teaching we've been doing uh, <clears throat> that one of the things that's amazing the mind of the flesh, the soul of man, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And the mind of the soul is as paralleled and is a, 
akin to the mind of Satan as any attribute, any attribute of man. Your mind acts like Satan more than any other attribute. You say, oh, what do you mean? How do you know he's the father of lies? How do you know lying is in, in unredeemed man? Come on. Have you know the spirit of God doesn't lie? The Bible says God's not a man that he should lie. That means God's not a man that he can lie. So the spirit cannot lie, but man can lie. Man can believe a lie. Hello. And so we, we see these two things working, and, and they're, they're opposing. And all of a sudden, the church comes to a place, you get saved, you get redeemed, you come in, you ask Jesus to come in your life, your spirit man that was dead comes alive, and all of a sudden, uh, now you're a living being, because the Bible says you were dead in your trespasses and sin, and you get born again, Adam was put out of the garden, the Bible says he was dead, but Adam lived for about 800 years. Well, how did he live? He lived by his soul. And have you know the soul of man can live a long time because the soul of man will fight and dig and push and invent to get itself so it can live. And if you want to see an example, all you have to do is look at the Tower of Babel and the Bible says God came down because he said, whatever's in their mind, they can do. It's the only place God stepped in. How many you know God didn't come down in Noah's day? Because God was dealing with sin. And how many you know blood eradicates sin? The altar was done. The washing away. Everything was done to take care of sin. That's why man was judged. But how many you know when they went to build the Tower of Babel, God had to come down and confuse their language because their mind is able to create and do a lot of things. Whatever is in his mind to do, he can do. I mean, you know, your mind is a wicked instrument when it's not under the blood. But you see, God didn't want man to be made up of three parts, which he is, spirit, soul, and body. God didn't want man to have a soul that was at war with God. He wanted man to have a soul that was converted to God. Are you hearing me? He wanted a man to have a soul that could think with his mind like God. That would have emotions that were like God. You say, well, God doesn't have emotions. Saints, you don't read the Bible. One time it says he looked at his enemies and laughed. I mean, laughter is an emotion. I mean, no, Jesus looked at the city of Jerusalem and wept. That was God incarnate. He was weeping over the city. Yes, God has emotions. Hello? We were created in his image and likeness. Come on. So God wants us to have emotions. He wants us to have the mind of God. And he wants us to know the will of God. Not our will, but his will be done. Follow me? Because we are made out of these three major parts and uh, of spirit, soul, and body, the soul of man who becomes born again must have his or her soul converted. As I mentioned, the soul has three parts, the mind, will, and the emotions. Luke twenty two thirty two, 32, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, not Peter. Come on now. He said, Simon, when you're converted, not Peter. Because he was dealing with Peter who hasn't been, his nature hasn't been changed. So he called him, and Simon means a, a reed, a, like a, a, a reed in the, in, the, uh, in the edge of the water, you know, where it's a tall green thing, and it just flops. The bird can sit on the end of it, and it sways like this because the reed is blown through the wind back and forth. But he said later, gave him a new name, and he called him Petro. He called him Peter, a little piece of the rock. I have you here? A little piece of the rock. And we need to get this. So he says to him, Simon, when you are converted, when you have turned back, go and strengthen your brethren. How do you know that Peter 
had to come to an encounter. He denied the Lord. He had to come to an encounter where his soul got converted. Are you hearing me? Stay with me. I'll give you two scriptures real quick and I'm going to leave this. The word converted means to change something into a different form. You see, you can get saved, saints. You get born again. I got saved and, and, and uh, 46 years ago. And when I got saved, uh, I, I was alive. Everything was different. But I was still walking in a body that had not been converted. I still had a mind that was not converted. Hello? I still had a will and emotions that were not converted. Are you hearing me? And then what happens by and through the blood of Jesus and the power of God's word, God began to change my mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. So I begin to think like the new creature, and then the old creature began to die and got less of an effect in my life. Now, have you know, water baptism gives this ability. We go in, we bury the old man, we rise up, and we can walk in the newness of life. Notice it said, you don't have the newness of life. You have to walk in the newness of life. That means... It is a daily exercise. It's a daily process. you got to get up and walk out. Why does it say walk out your own salvation? Because you got to walk this thing out. Salvation is free. Discipleship costs everything. Now, if you look at John chapter 3, verse 3, John 3, verse 3, it gives you an example I said on Thursday night. Jesus answered and said to him, most surely, I say, to, uh, say unto you or to you, unless one is born again, he cannot, say it with me, he cannot see the kingdom of God. How many of you get that? When you get born again, you see the kingdom. You see that this is the truth. This is really the truth. But you don't have it yet. I me here. How many of you know you see something, ever gone by and looked at a new car? You see it, but you don't have it yet. You say, well, I got paperwork. That's all right. I wrote everything. Right. Have you closed yet? No. How many of you know there's a closing process? Closing of the old, putting on the new. And so in the process of that, you and I get to see that there's a scene. Go to Matthew 18.3. Matthew 18, 3. Now, I'm teaching you something today because I want to get you to the end, which is the prophetic word I want to give you today. Are you still with me? Yes. Surely I say to you, unless you're converted and become a little, as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. How you know you can see it, but if you don't get converted, you ain't entering it. How you know there's a difference in seeing and entering you saw this church this morning, but you walked through the door. You can stay outside and see it all you want, but when you came in, you got a hold of something. Come on, how many hear this? So you got to understand the process of this new man is that you and I get born again. Our soul has to get converted. Do you agree with me? Now, the mind is an interesting part of our human experience. I'm going to give you some pieces real quick here, but I gave you the title, and I'm going to get to the title at the end, okay? The mind is an interesting part of the human experience. A, a, a friend of mine was speaking to a man at the airport uh, the, on an airplane, and the man commented to him that said, well, you know, they were talking about whatever they were talking about, and they said, you know, we don't use but about 10% of our minds. And my friend said, he, he kind of pressed him and said, really, he asked, is, is, is that really true? And the man, oh, you know, emphatically now, he was defending it. Yes, that is emphatically true. Yes, only 10%. My friend responded by saying, then we have a 90% chance that you're wrong. <laughs> you have 100%. Okay. Hey, man, some of y'all will get it tomorrow. Duh. How many of you understand? If you only have 10 but you have 100 and you 
don't use but 10, 90 of it means you could be wrong about the 10. The human being or the human brain is a very complex computer. And it contains approximately 100 billion nerve cells. 100 billion nerve endings are in the brain. That's a lot. Hello. And they begin to die when you were born. It's amazing. Watch this now. And, and, and these, these cells perform like little tower, a little teeny power plants. Brian, you'll like this. So the cells perform like little tiny power plants and generate their own electric power. That's why your brain, you ever see pictures, they show it sparking because there's electricity in there. Are you hearing me? And, and it produces hundreds, while it's doing that, it's producing hundreds uh, of chemicals that affect your moods and your reactions to all situations. Have you heard that? Endorphins and things. There's all kinds of chemicals being shot out into the brain through those electrodes, and it's all going on in your mind. Our brain has to do something with that. So God invented the brain, has its own house cleaner. It has a maid service. And this, this cleaning service would be called the scraper. And the scraper cells act like little tiny vacuum cleaners and they collect all the dead and injured tissue and they deposit it into the nearest vein to be carried away through the blood system. So your brain has a little vacuum cleaner and all those cells that are damaged and, get, and, and die, it goes, sucks them all up, puts them in the vein, shoots them through the blood and out they go. Are you listening? So that means your mind can fit scripture because it's being renewed. It's being renewed every day. The mercies of the Lord are new every day because your mind is embracing the truth of the situation and mercy is available every day. Aren't you glad you don't have to keep the old dead brain cell reminding you of your failure? You have a thing called a memory. It's the size of a pea. You know, a bean, a pea. That's how big your memory is. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say it. Now, our brain has two major parts. It has a conscious and a subconscious. You say, why are you telling us this? I've been talking about the mind and the soulish mind. I'm going to tell you something about the mind for a minute so that you can see how this word can line up to give you a new mind. Can you hear me today? And we're talking about dreams. This whole conference for the kids is based on dreams. Before I get there, you're going to hear me say this, and I'll say it again today, right now, that I'm not talking about those nightmarish, ghoulish dreams of absolute stupidity and confusion that you want somebody to interpret. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about because you ate some hot peppers or something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about dreams from the level of your potential vision for your life. Those are dreams. We're not talking to these kids about coming here and learning prophetic dreams like Joseph. We're bringing them in here to get a new mind injected into them, to get some new download into their computer, and to flush out some old methods uh, and give them a new mind so they can see their potential from a God position. And some of you sitting here, need to figure out how come you always see the negative. You always see why you can't. 
instead of what God's word says you can. It's because your brain ain't flushing right. I brought a vacuum here today. You can hear that sucking effect. Our brain has two major parts, the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious mind controls and guides the subconscious. Hello? And the subconscious guides your body's health, helps food digest properly, regulates your heartbeat and your breathing, and other involuntary functions. The subconscious mind, you're not even aware it's doing it. How many of you know you haven't been thinking about breathing and you've been breathing for a while? Yeah. I think. Yeah. No, no, you have our mind, the, the seat of our conscience, cannot be physically seen or touched. It's like the program in a computer written on our brain. How many of you know when God has a seed, he writes on the seed what that seed is destined to do? He wrote on the seed of the apple tree that it was to produce apples and not oranges. Scientists have tried to figure this out for years. Here's another example. A horse, when he gets up, gets up with his front feet every time. A cow gets up with his back feet. Four-legged animal. And the cow, every time, every time, a cow will get up with its back feet first. A horse will, I've owned a horse, a horse will get up with its front feet. How did he know to do that? On the seed that you and I can't see, from the horse, the daddy horse, was written on there, you're a horse, not a cow. And so everything in that thing said, I, I want to be. I don't want to be a man. No, I mean, I don't want to be a cow. I want to be a horse. I'm going to see, they're going to ride me into the rodeo, not chase me around in the rodeo. I'm going to not be a cow anymore. I'm going to be a horse. Guess up. Spectre comes over and says, it's a cow. No, I'm not. I'm a horse. Let me have the seed. Looks at the seed, puts it in the test, comes back. It's a cow. So when you're confused, when you're not sure, <laughs> when God made the seed, he wrote on it. You say, I can't see that writing. So he wrote on it, what you going to be? Mm 